Oh, look how exciting this is. We're out at the bee yard here on the Daddy Curbs farm. And in the back of my little blue farm truck are two horizontal hives. My task today is to get them out of the truck alone, because I'm by myself, and get them into the bee yard, find a place for them so we can figure out how to start transitioning from the horizontal, I mean vertical, Langstroth hives to the horizontal hives. That wasn't so bad. How do you like my tie-dye shirt? Luke made it. I want to show you some of the features of these horizontal hives before we get them out there. Well, I'm just a little bit winded. First of all, notice my very simple handle. That's for me to grab when I want to open the hive, like just a little hook. And then on this side, a chain to help keep it open. A screw here down to here at just the right length to make it just a little past 90 degrees so it'll stay open. Inside the hive I put aluminum window cloth or window screen over the vents. There's three three-quarter inch vents on both ends of the lid and that goes over the top of this. That's, uh, that's for like an attic space above this inner cover, or these inner cover boards. Two of the inner cover boards also have a vent, and those will just be spaced out like they are evenly to provide for some ventilation up into this area, and the air can be uh, drawn out through those vents up here. Inside here, just a regular long hive. I have a, a divider board to go between the hive space and the dead space. Let's walk around the hive here. My hinge, we have the hive entrances. There's three entrances. Two of them will be blocked. One will be used. Maybe at some point multiples will be open, but initially it'll just be one. And then we have the long piano hinge, or the long hinge here. That long hinge is really good because we can put a bunch of short screws in. This is only three quarter inch material. So these are three quarter inch screws. And then on the bottom I used uh, one and one quarter inch screws just to be a little more secure going into that bottom, uh, the bottom board there. So we have a three quarter inch lip on a one half inch board. Overall, I feel like the hives turned out well. They look nice. They seem like they're going to be functional, but of course... I haven't used them yet, so I don't know for sure. But I do like how they turned out as far as just a functional box for me, the beekeeper. We'll see how well the bees like them. Dr. Leo uses these. Uh, you saw a video of mine where we were sitting and chatting about beekeeping. I first met Dr. Leo on the Doug and Stacy Off Grid with Doug and Stacy channel. Saw him doing long hives or horizontal hives on Doug and Stacy's little homestead, and I was very intrigued. So when I got to meet them and see those boxes in person when I went to the Homesteading Life Conference, it was just something went off in my mind and said, that's what I should be doing. So we're going to give it a shot. I had a friend build these two boxes for me. I put the chains and hinges and paint and all that on, but the boxes were built by a friend. So let's get them into the apiary. Over time, I developed little holes in my, my screen hood here. And uh, the double electrical tape, one piece on the outside, one in the inside, to me seemed like a good idea. It's not working. They're falling off. I discovered that I had holes in the hood when I had some bees in my hood and I didn't recognize from where they were coming. Put one up here 
on this mat. I gotta get the weeds off of it, but that's where one is going for sure. I'd like to put one over here in place of this hive, but we'll have to see about transitioning that hive. That wasn't so bad. Bees didn't come out at all. We got this one area cleaned up. So now we're going to go get one hive and bring it in right here. Man, won't that be so exciting when the entire bee yard is full of these boxes instead of these? I think it'll look better, it'll be easier to, to know who to manage and how to manage them. No more heavy lifting. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this box moved. I'm going to get a hive box, a, a horizontal hive put right there in that spot. Transition all of the frames from that hive into the horizontal. And that way the bees are already used to flying right in that same spot. And then I'll get that nuke, that small nuke that's over here, into this box that the camera's sitting on, the one I just put in place. With this now close, I'll get these boxes stacked up over here, somehow. And then I'll get that box, I'll get that box in place, move these here, Get that over here on the mat, and then get the frames put in. Well, there's bees up top. Let's see what they look like down inside there. Top box looks pretty empty. I expected that. Notice I have two different size boxes here. This is a full deep and this is the, the deeper medium, the larger medium. So I'm going to be combining both of these into the horizontal hive. This hive still looks pretty good. Lots of bees in there. They don't have a lot to do right now because there's no pollen or nectar anywhere. But they're hanging out. With the boxes moved over here, I can get all of this out of the way and get that hive box pulled back and get those transitioned into there. Now, a lot of beekeepers agree that if you move a hive within just a couple feet, the bees will be a little disoriented, but they'll find it no problem. The only difference between this new hive and the old one, as far as position goes, is it's going to be a little higher, maybe a little to the left or right, but I think they're going to find that just fine. We're going to position the hive on this end, and then let it grow to this end. This is my divider board. I'm going to start positioning those uh, frames out of the old box into here. I'm going to pay attention to where the brood is and try to get it on this end as much as possible. 
and then let the rest of it stack to the left. I'm looking to see if I see any eggs. And I don't. So I'm going to slide this to this left end closest to the camera here. Same thing here. It looks like this is mostly empty with a little bit of nectar. Not much. Because eventually... I would like to replace all of my frames to not have foundation at all. But that's probably a couple years of process before I can completely transition to that. Let me turn the camera around and show you what I'm doing as I'm pulling them out of the hive. I am taking a look just to see what they have on them as far as resources. And then just placing them right here in the hive, in the uh, long hive, the horizontal box. Each time I'm keeping an eye out for that queen just to make sure, you know, if I see her, of course, I want to be more careful. I always want to be careful, but just keeping an eye on the queen if they're, if she is sighted or not. We have some pollen and some honey. In this one, these bees right now are extremely docile, which is very nice for me. I don't think I found any brood yet. Now I gotta get stuff moved down. So far, everything has just been resources. I had to get stuff moved down this way so I have more room. This deep frame that I just put in has a lot of honey on one side and is mostly empty on the other. I'm going to save it for this end and I'll probably end up staggering the shorter frames between the taller frames. So they will actually build out. The bees will actually build a portion of comb on the bottom to fill in that space. That one has a lot of honey on it. And this one has this one has a lot of honey. And actually has a lot of uncapped honey. We are getting into some brood nest here. There's not a lot of brood, but this is, I can see some larvae down in there. I haven't seen our queen lady yet. And here's, here's a lot more brood. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a lot of capped brood right there. So our, our brood nest is going to be down here on the right side, 
as I stand behind the box. And here's an example of how the bees take a short frame and turn it into a tall frame if they have the room. So a lot of honey and a little bit of brood on the other side. Mostly honey. And here's an empty deep. So I'm going to slide all these back here and put this one between here and here. Alright, in the new horizontal hive here, we have our brood nest on this end. We have a lot of resources here in the middle and on the end. As they become more productive through this next honey flow, which is going to be a month or so away, uh, they'll start building in, filling that in, and then I can move this down, the backer board, divider board, and move it down and insert more frames. And I'll start putting my inner cover boards back on. This is the entrance I want open and I want to close those two. So I'm going to put a piece of cloth in both of those. That's one horizontal hive in place. It looks like I do need to level it up some, but I'll come back out with a level and some shims to put under the feet. But for now, it's in there. The hive is transitioned. We'll come back and check on that probably tomorrow. Let's go ahead and take a peek in this little box, this nuke box. Well, that's not bad. There's a fair number of bees in there. I'm going to go ahead and get those in that other box. So now in the Daddy Curbs bee yard, we have one, two horizontal hives and a total of 
four more of the vertical Langstroth hives. The goal is to get eventually six horizontal hives and be done with the vertical hives altogether. I left the boxes stacked in front of that horizontal hive because there were still bees on it and I was giving them a way to crawl in. I'll come out tomorrow and move that. I'm really excited about the possibility of my bee yard looking a lot more clean and orderly. When I just have a bunch of these boxes like this sitting here, I think it's going to look nicer than a bunch of these boxes all stacked up. Plus I won't have as many uh, boxes, wooden ware, the stuff that you use for your hive stacked up around the house on the front porch and back porch. I can clean that up, possibly sell that equipment. Then I'll be transitioned to horizontal hives completely, making this whole operation way more fun. At least that's the goal. You guys know that here on the Daddy Curbs farm I believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. I want to give a great big shout out to Dr. Leo for being a natural beekeeper that's willing to share his story to help other beekeepers. Also a shout out to Doug and Stacy. Their off-grid homestead is amazing and it was really nice visiting them and seeing this type of hive with Dr. Leo on site in person. Thank you so much everyone for sharing your story and being a part of my story through this video. I'll talk to you soon.